The mayor of the city of Kherson tells CNN that Russian troops are everywhere after taking over the city in southern Ukraine. The occupation has forced a lot of residents to go into hiding. Including Alexandra Zovtuk. She's a mother of three who has been hunkered down with her family in her grandmother's home. And Alexandra, thank you so much for joining us this morning, given everything that you're going through. And I know that you have three children. You've been in this apartment. Can you just tell us what, what it's been like for the last several days? Uh, hello. Uh, it's been like a nightmare, I think. Uh, every day I wake up and I'm like, no, it can't be just like happening right now, you know? It's like a terrible dream, but it is. It's our reality for now. So we're just like trying to, uh, you know, take ourselves and uh, be brave, patient, and praying all the time. <laughs> and Alexandra, I, I could see that you're there with your little ones. Um, what have they asked you about what's happening? What have you been able to, to share with them? Do you think they, they know what you're enduring right now? Uh, my oldest sis, uh, my oldest uh, child, she's seven years old, so yes, yeah, she understands everything because she's like, you know, worried all the time. She wakes up at night because uh, first couple of days we stayed in my grandmom's house and there were bombs everywhere like this area was very very um, terrible situation over there so we heard everything uh, so she was like terrified but my middle child she's four years old she doesn't understand she thinks like it's a game you know uh, I'm talking to her like uh, she needs to be uh, she needs to listen to me and all this stuff but she's like playing around and it's okay because I don't want her to be in stress all the time. And my youngest son, he's one year old, he's sleeping by the way right now. Uh, he doesn't understand everything, but I think that he feels that something's going on because he sleeps not very well because of all this situation. So it's like, but I'm hoping my kids will forget about this like a nightmare. I'm hoping so much for this. Hmm. I mean, so you were there with a, a seven-year-old, a four-year-old, and a one-year-old. Can you tell us, what are you doing when it comes to, to basic supplies like food? Have you been able to leave to to get more food or what, what are you guys doing about that? Uh, the most horrible thing right now is that we're occupied and we're like isolated from another, you know, like the whole country. So they don't let uh, Ukrainian people to bring uh, food to our city. So there are not much left in the stores. Uh, I managed to buy like when all this started i was like oh my god it might be no water you know so i need to buy something that cooks very fast like for kids like uh cans you know like with kids porridge or whatever this stuff so i bought as much as i could but i was like one person me in the store i couldn't carry a lot of this but for now we have food but uh, i don't know for how long this will uh, you know last maybe like for a week or so we have but uh there are seven here so we all have to you know eat uh we're just hoping and praying that something will come up and they will at least uh let uh ukrainians bring us food here to their son at least and medical uh, supplies because as far as i know the like people don't have medicines they need because everything is sold out and Alexandra, have you had any contact with the Russian troops in the area? Have you had interactions with them? And if so, what have they been like? Uh, I didn't actually like me because we don't go far away from here, from the district. We are not allowed to go anywhere like far, only to the store or whatever, just here. Uh, I know they have blocked us. My best friend's mom, she passed away and she couldn't even come to say goodbye to her to another district, you know, because they don't let cars drive through the town right now. So, uh, but I know that uh, people that are trying to help other like volunteers, or, uh, if I say it correctly, uh, they're trying to drive, they stop them all, all the time, they check the cars and uh, like this, but I haven't seen them. I only heard them when they were bombing the bridge that is in Antonovka. It's like downtown Kherson when we stayed in my grandmom's house. Only Alexandra, just to see what you're what you're juggling with 
these three small children with you, so many of your family members, it's just, it's unbelievable to see and, and your strength is amazing. And we really do appreciate you coming on to, to tell our audience what it's like and what so many of you are living through right now. So thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you too. Many of you want to know how you can help those who are impi impacted by this Russian invasion. And for more information about humanitarian efforts, you can go to CNN.com slash impact. Those are organizations that have been vetted by CNN. You know that you can donate to them and they can help people like Alexandra, other people who are in need, of course, as this is going on.